Hey guys, this is Johan, and I am going to be walking you through every step of how to make this glorious, tasty, crackling dish we Filipinos call lechon kawali, as prepared by my mother, Grace. It is basically our own version of crispy, deep-fried pork belly that is thoroughly seasoned beforehand. This particular version of the dish is one of our family's classic recipes, originally cooked by my late grandfather Tony in our Perinderia in Rojas City, Capiz, Philippines. If the words crispy, deep fried, and pork belly ring a bell in your head, you are going to want to stay for this. I mean, just listen to this. Let's start by preparing all of the necessary ingredients, all of which, along with the measurements, are listed in the description down below. Here we have the pork belly, garlic powder or fresh minced garlic, ground black pepper, onion powder or fresh diced onions, sea salt, whole black peppercorns, pork bouillon cube, whole dried bay leaves, water for boiling, additional salt to taste for pre-frying seasoning, and cooking oil for deep frying. Pour the water into a large enough pot. Then add the pork bouillon cube, peppercorns, salt, onions, ground pepper, garlic, and bay leaves. Stir the contents of the pot and set the stove to medium-high heat to bring the stock to a boil. Once it starts boiling, lower the heat to medium and add the pork belly. This process will ensure the infusion of flavors and produce a softer crunch of the skin. It generally takes between 20 to 30 minutes depending on the quality of the pork. Meat from a younger hog will typically be more tender, thus taking less time to boil. While we wait, let's see what's going on outside. Fresh, clean air. Well, it looks like we've got a good thing cooking on the grill for brunch. Yep, it's our most sought after inihaw na baboy, or grilled marinated pork. Oh, it smells divine. Look at that fat dripping from the pork and those perfect marks left by the grill. If you want to see how these babies are prepared and cooked, leave a like down below, then subscribe and hit the notification bell to be the first one to know about it. About 25 minutes has transpired and it seems that the pork is tender enough. Now, what we want to do is take them out of the boiling stock one by one. And also, let's watch as my mother struggles in her pursuit of catching this one last piece of pork belly. Go, mom. What we want to do next is to drain every drop of excess moisture from the pork. This is a very crucial step to help make certain that we get a skin that is as crunchy as possible instead of a saggy or rubbery one. Now, remember that additional salt for pre-frying that I told you about at the beginning of this video? Now's the time to make use of that. Rub the salt into all of the surfaces of the pork belly. This is going to be somewhat of a subjective process as every person has varying individual tolerance to saltiness. For reference, we have used about 1 teaspoon of sea salt and the dish came out to be perfect to our taste buds. After this generous salting of the meat, we will need to let it drain once more for about 15 minutes. Remember, we want the skin to be as free of moisture as possible. Now that we have seasoned the pork directly, the salt will pull out even more fluid from inside of the skin through the process of osmosis, hence rendering our pork skin to be even drier. And that is exactly what is required to achieve the level of crunch that we are going after. 
The next thing that we need to do is to prick the skin with the use of a fork as we are doing here. This will create minuscule holes that will assist in introducing the cooking oil and heat into the skin during frying to make it pop. The holes also help in pulling out even more moisture from the inside of the skin. Yes, I know, it demands a lot of work, but trust me, it will all be worth the sweat in the end. Now to frying, finally. Pour cooking oil into the frying pan and set the stove to medium-high heat until the oil measures around 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Ideally, enough oil should be used to cover the pork belly during frying. We have also found that peanut oil provides the crispiest results. Now bring the heat down to medium and slowly lower the pieces of pork into the hot oil. Immediately cover the frying pan to avoid oil burns brought about by oil explosions. Take it from me, I know. Don't ask why, just, just trust me. Yep, what did I tell you? This medium heat frying will take about 10 to 15 minutes. Turn the pork pieces every 5 minutes to prevent from overcooking. After which, turn the heat up to medium high and continue frying for about 15 to 20 minutes while somewhat continuously flipping the pork pieces to prevent from burning. At about the end of the frying process, turn the pork skin side down to directly expose the skin to the bottom of the pan. This will help facilitate further popping of the skin for maximum crunch. Once the pork is golden brown and has crispy skin as shown, your lechon kawali is now cooked. Yes, I know that you are dying to bite into this piece of art, but please, let it rest for about 10 minutes before cutting. Its exposure to air gives it opportunity to get even crispier. This also makes it cooler to touch when cutting. After letting it rest, cut the pork into your desired serving sizes and enjoy. If you have been frustrated with your previous attempts at deep fried pork bellies ending up having leathery skin, or if you just want to treat yourself to a hearty, satisfyingly crispy and savory dish this self-isolation season, give this lechon kawali recipe a try. It requires utterly basic ingredients and is undeniably and excessively good. You deserve it. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like to help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more of this in the future, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Once again, this is Johan and thank you for watching an episode of Grazie's Kitchen. See you next time.